Hey, what's up guys? Drew here over at Rough Hiker Outdoors. Glad to have you back and I'm glad to be back. I know it's been a long time since I made a video. Got a lot of stuff coming up, uh, waiting in the wings. I'm going to try to get back into YouTube uh, a lot more consistently in this new year. So uh, anyway, guys, stick around because today we're going to take a look at the Benchmade Presidio 2. All right, guys, so like I said, today is a Knife Thursday episode and we're going to look at this knife right here. Um, a knife that I really, really, really like, and I've had it for a few months now, and I feel like I can give a pretty good, uh, honest review of what it's capable of. Before I jump into that, let me just say, um, I've got a lot of stuff to review, okay? Um, I went on a, uh, an elk hunting trip in Colorado in the fall, and, uh, I, I got to test out a lot of this stuff, so, um, it was, it was a backpacking elk trip. Do, you, do it yourself on public land, no guides or anything like that. So um, there's a bunch of stuff. Obviously, these weren't used, but I uh, use these boots and this tent and this pack. And I'm going to review all this stuff. So got a lot of stuff coming up. So stick around for that. I'm going to try to take a day off here and there and, and knock out some reviews. So today's going to be a review day. Also, the SEPR4. Excellent knife. But back to the Benchmade Presidio 2. Now I'm going to roll in some clips uh, of this thing being used, but I'm going to try to, I'll try to get some close-ups here. You can see this knife has been used. It's got some wear, you know, on the coating, um, you know, paint on the clip has suffered a little bit, um, but this is how a lot of my knives end up looking. Because I use my knives, they're not safe queens. Um, I do all kinds of stupid stuff with them. Uh, I'll try to put in some pictures if I still have them from when I, uh, I we had a, a leak in our roof and it damaged some of the um, some of the sheetrock on the ceiling. And uh, you know I got impatient trying to cut it out, so I just grabbed this thing and I just started honking on it and and punching it through and tearing out uh, this. Oh, all the sheetrock from the ceiling and then I said well what the heck so I ended up cutting the new piece with it and slapping it up in there um, hit a few nails hit a few screws but uh, knife just kept on trucking um, this is a great knife now what I'd like to do is uh, I'll bring out a couple knives for comparison uh, size wise um, because this is a this is a larger knife this is not the mini version okay I wear size XL gloves and you can see that you know, I mean, there's definitely some handle left over, but this this has a lot of lot of purchase. I I doubt there's going to be many people on Earth whose hands um, are too big for this knife. It, it's got a lot of great grip. Little thumb ramp here with some jimping. No jimping on the blade. I'm fine with that. Uh, I got this really long swedge at the top of the blade, um, and it makes the blade appear thinner than it actually is. Um, you know, when I first got it, I was like, oh man, that looks kind of thin. But then, you know, you take the swedge into account and everything, and, and it's actually a very stout blade. And I've done some, as I do with all my knives, and I know I shouldn't, but, you know, stuff happens and I end up prying with them and, and this thing's held up pretty good. Uh, no no bends, no chips, no, no snap tips. So um, aluminum scales with steel liners, um, Great traction with the milled aluminum, 3D milled aluminum, really like it. Um, comfortable knife in pretty much any grip that that you could want. Um, you know, honestly, for EDC stuff, you're mostly going to be doing this for close-up stuff or this or just a full-out, you know, power pushing cut. So this is great. Um, obviously, you guys know that I'm a fan of Benchmade and their lifetime warranty and all that stuff. Um, it's a big knife, but it's definitely not as big as, say, the Contigo, okay? I think the Contigo is, like, just over, it's like 4.1 inches and I, for, the, for the blade, and I think this is in the neighborhood of 3.5. Um, so, still plenty of purchase. This is, um, the Contigo is like the upper limit of what I like. Um, it's pretty close to the Proxy. It's about as big as I would like uh, an everyday carry blade. And, uh, you know, this, this is pretty much perfect for me along with the 940, 940, 
lot of similar things here. Uh, aluminum, aluminum handles, steel liners, um, you know, the, the cutting edge on the blade um, is a little bit less on the 940. I think it's like a quarter inch less or something. Um, but this is just kind of like a bigger, thicker version. It's got a wider blade, wider handle, thicker handle. So I know some people have said that this kind of is just, it feels too small for their hands. Uh, one guy in particular on Instagram, Clayton Ogre, check him out. He's a cool guy. Um, but he doesn't really like 940 because it's, it's too narrow this way. Um, so Presidio 2, that's going to be something that's really going to fit well in your hand if, if you like a bigger, wider grip. Um, say along the lines of like a paramilitary two or a para three, something like that. Uh, other size comparisons. This is a pretty common knife. A lot of people know. Um, this is a buck 112. So the 112 is the smaller of the two. The 110 is closer in size to this, but again, the blade's not going to be as wide. Um, pretty common knife. This is uh, the bailout, roughly the same size as the bug out. You know, definitely smaller, thinner, all that stuff. So. This is, I've heard people call the Presidio 2 tank-like, you know, built like a tank. I've heard that comparison a few times, and I'd probably agree with that. Um, it feels indestructible in your hand. Um, that does come with um, a weight penalty, if you call it that. I, it's still not heavy enough to bother me in my pocket. I carry this all the time without, without ever noticing that it's there. It's never a hindrance, but you pick it up next to a bailout or a bug out or you know some other lightweight knife like that any delicas uh enduras stuff like that they're all going to feel uh like a featherweight compared to this so uh anyway basically th this knife is is excellent for me um centering is perfect the action is butter smooth open close one hand no problem um Really, really like it. Really like the construction. Easy to clean it out because it's, uh, you know, it doesn't have a back spacer like the uh, 940, a solid spacer. Uh, it's just got the standoffs there, the, the barrels. Um, you know, again, you guys know that I'm a Benchmade fan. It's really good for one hand opening with the access lock, one hand closing. Very ambidextrous. I'm a lefty, so that's important to me. Um, so, anyway, basically, this knife is tough as nails and it is a slicer. I'll tell you the it's it's a very high saber grind. Um and with that swedge, I there's just it seems like there's less friction. When you go through cardboard and uh when you're going through I mean even when I was going through wallboard and gypsum board, I just couldn't believe uh how this thing cuts. It definitely is a better slicer than the 940. It's a better slicer than the Contigo. Um because just because of the grind and because uh, the blade stock is a, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thickness well it's a hair more than the 940 but because of its width you know this is this is a, a steeper angle so it's just it's a really good slicer it reminds me um, almost of a full flat grind in in terms of how it just glides through stuff and S30V, you know, you know what to expect with Benchmade's S30V. They do an excellent heat treat, uh, do a great job on it. So if I was going to rate this thing uh, as far as let's let's go on a five star scale, just picking something out of out of the air. Ergonomics, I would say probably four and a half out of five stars. I mean, there are slightly more comfortable knives, but not much. This thing fits your hand great, fills it up. Uh, but it's still nimble and, be, you know, it's just, it's great. Action, I'm going to give that a five because it's a long blade and it's a wide blade. But the way it's ground, it's not super heavy. So it flies out of there. It's It comes out way faster uh, than the heavier, M, the heavier, thicker M4 blade on the Contigo. Um, that's probably about the same as my Proxy. Proxy's thicker, but it's a flipper, so it's kind of a different deal. Uh, but the action on this is just great. Really like it. I I'll give that a five out of five. Um, you know, construction as far as how strong I think it is, I'm going to give the the handle and the scales uh, five out of five, and the blade probably like um, I don't know three and a half or four. 
it's very strong and I haven't had any issues with it and I've beat on it, but it's, it's not like a sharpened pry bar. There's, there's stronger knives. So, um, anyway, and, and I think, it, I, I think the knife looks great too. I think, I think the milled, milled aluminum looks great and very comfortable and still provides traction. So, uh, overall I, I'd give this thing like four and a half or five. I really, I really like it a lot. There's, I can't think of anything that I would do to really improve this. If you're looking for a good beefy knife that's going to fill your hand, um, Presido 2 is a great option, uh, great warranty, all that stuff that comes along with it. Yes, you're going to pay for that stuff. Um, you know, as with all Benchmade knives, they come at a premium. I know people are going to hate on it for that. Um, buy one used on Instagram. That's how I get almost all these. The only ones I bought new out of this group were my 940 and my, uh, my Contigo. And the 940, I had gift cards and rewards points at the store that I bought it, so I didn't pay near full price. The rest of these, uh, I I did I either traded or bought secondhand um, for a lot less. So, anyway, great knife. Um, really, really like it. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I hope that uh, maybe you learned something. And uh, God bless you guys, as always. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Now, the video's over in this new year. I definitely want to continue on with my little encouraging word at the end. And um, more than encouraging word, I want to give you like an encouraging plan. Uh, in, in our church this year, uh, I feel like God was leading me uh, for, for us to really get deeper into the word. So I made a reading plan, and it's five chapters a week. Uh, and that'll be the whole New Testament in a year. And we've got notebooks, and we go through, and we study, and we look things up, and we check out the Greek, and then we get together once a week and, and talk about it. And uh, it's we just had our first Bible study um, last night uh, after everyone has been reading and taking notes, and I'm just getting such a great response. So I want to encourage you guys to get into the Word, take some time, study it. Don't just read it to read it, but take notes on it look things up, get a concordance, look at the Greek, you know, figure stuff out. There's so many layers to God's word uh, that when you really start digging in, it'll bless you more and more than, than what you get just on the surface, which is already great. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.